Welcome back! In the last video, we had just finished writing the rotate function, which rotates our tetrominoes around a particular pivot point defined inside their record. In this video, we're going to go ahead and finish defining the rest of the tetrominoes, and we're going to write a function called shift, which will allow us to move our tetrominoes around. So let's start off and finish off these tetrominoes uh, real quick. I'll start off with the L piece, and I'll just list them all out. So we're going to have an L tetromino. And to start out, I'm just going to, so to make sure things compile, I'm going to set them all equal to the I tetromino. So we have L, Z, Z equals I. We've got an S. We've got a T piece. And we've got an O piece. And so this is, uh, should be seven tetrominoes. All of the, each tetromino is one of the seven ways in which you can configure four blocks, uh, that are adjacent to each other orthogonally. Uh, alright, so the L piece, um, I'm gonna go ahead and copy the J piece here because it's very similar. So let me copy that there. The J piece, we have an L piece here. And I'm gonna make the L piece orange. And it's very similar in shape here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, align these all here to the left. And then add an extra one here. Um, and this one is going to be at negative one, one, like so. Uh, the origin point is the same, and the number of rows and columns it takes up is the same. All right, let's copy this again for the Z piece. Well, first off, let me uh, run this just to make sure I don't have any weird issues. All right, so there's my L piece. My Z piece is also of type uh, tetromino. And the Z piece is going to be uh, very similar. Again, it has four pieces. Uh, let's indent this uh, so that all of these uh, represents what the shape will appear as. So we have one, zero. Um, is that right? One, negative one, one, zero. And then we have zero, zero here. And we have zero, one there. Excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and make the Z piece red. And we'll keep the pivot at zero, zero as well. Uh, the rows and columns, let's see, it takes up two rows and three columns. Uh, let's refresh, make sure we don't have any issues. All right, it seems to be compiling all right. So now we have the S tetromino. I'll go ahead and copy this again. Similar to the Z tetromino, just going the other way. Let's go ahead and make the S tetromino green. And let me indent this so that it looks the way I want. Um, I'll go ahead and make this spot zero, zero, uh, which will make this zero, one. And these two will be at negative one row. And this one will be at negative one. And this one will be at negative one, zero. And again, it takes up the same number of rows and columns. Uh, we've got a T piece next. Let me copy that. Let me refresh again. Always nice to just make sure you didn't make any mistakes. Uh, compile often, so that way you will know exactly what you were working on when you got that compilation error. So here we go. We got a T piece. This one's going to come across like that. Um, and I'll fill this in in just a second because it is not going to... Uh, I want to do it based off the origin here. So this is going to be zero, zero. So this is going to be one row below, zero columns over. This will be one column prior. And this will be one column further. And this is going to occupy again two rows, uh, three columns. And then finally, the O piece. Let's go ahead and copy that one more time. Oops. And this will be O tetromino. O tetromino. Let's refresh just to make sure we don't have any 
weird typos. We do. I missed a comma here. Go ahead and add that in. Uh, both spots, of course. And refresh. And it's happy. We've got a happy little compiler here. And let's continue on. Uh, and I'm going to just fill this in with some stub values for now. And so I'm going to go with this top left is going to be at zero, zero. Uh, we go over one column, down one column, over one column, like that. I'm going to make the uh, this block yellow. Oop, and my T piece, I'm going to make purple before I forget that. This one is two by two, and the pivot point is going to be in the dead center. So uh, we're down, it's negative five. And the column that we want is five. There we go. Let's refresh. And we could go through uh, and check each one of these out. And so I'm going to do that now. So we've done I, we've done J. Let's check out L. We got a nice L. Let's check out our T piece. Very nice. We'll go with the S piece, the Z piece, and the O piece. All right, each one of those looks correct to me. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write a function called shift, which will be useful later. And I guess we can test it out now. And what it is going to do is it's going to take in a pair of integers and a tetromino. The integers are going to represent how many rows and columns we want to move this one. And it's going to produce a new tetromino that has been moved that many uh, rows and columns. So rows, columns, and uh, tetromino. And we're going to make that. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to shift all of the pieces in there. So we're going to say our new shape. So we have an old shape and our new shape uh, is going to be relative to our tetromino.shape. But we need to move everything a little bit. So again, we're going to use map like we did before. And we need to write a function that shifts all of them. Uh, once we've done that, we need to create a new pivot. So I'm going to call this pivot prime. And this pivot is going to be a new record where the R is equal to our old tetromino's uh, pivot R plus the number of rows we've moved. And we need to convert this to a float so that we can do uh, mathematics with both of them. And then our new column is going to be our tetromino.pivot.column. Oops. Got a little typo here. And we're going to do two float on uh, the calls we want to move. So that'll translate our pivot. Um, that looks good to me. And then finally, we need to, oh, we got a little bit of, there, our Elm mode is trying to be too helpful. We're going to create a new record, uh, which looks just like the old one, except for our shape is going to be our new shape. And our pivot is going to equal to our pivot prime, like that. Okay. And now we need to figure out what this helper function looks like. I am going to uh, create a new function called uh, shift helper. And I'm just going to add that in right before here. Let's just tab all this stuff over. And so we're going to write a shift helper. And the shape is a list of locations. So our shift helper should be a function over locations. So row and call. And the function itself is going to produce a new location. And so the location we want to produce is our row shifted by our number of rows and our column shifted by our number of columns. I think that's it. So we have our shift helper now. And so for every location in our shape, we're going to shift it by the rows and columns.
So let's refresh, make sure we don't have any compilation errors. We look to be doing all right. And let's go ahead and shift this over. We'll shift it down uh, one column. Oh, sorry, down one row and or up actually. One is up. Shift it up one column. And so you should have seen it jump there a little bit. And let's shift it over five rows. There we go. So we have this nice little function uh, for shifting. So we can use this to easily make our pieces move around the screen uh, when the user uh, does controls on them. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and add in functionality for rotating and moving our pieces around the screen. So we'll see you in the next video.